Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at how to make a PWA from an existing Canvas app. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. And we'll take a look at the store right up here. And in the store, there are some apps which we call zaps and we are going to convert these right now there's a little message here saying the zaps are not yet pwa we'll convert shortly and so that's what we're doing now we just had a bunch of stuff to do before we did that so let's do odd robots right here let's take a look at the app and see what that looks like now and press that. so here's odd robots and here they are. You have to choose the evil robot. Hmm. You see an evil robot there? No. Oh, it's not that one. Oh, darn. Uh, actually, don't <laughs> see an evil robot. No. That one? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. I should have known by its little top there. Two evil robots. Yeah. Yes. And there. Okay. You get the idea. Now we have to find three evil robots. Okay, so what we're going to do is convert that into a, a Zap, um, which is a mobile app. So let's see, up here it says how to do that. So Zaps are apps made with Zim. See the Zim mobile for tips and tools. So I click that. It explains that uh, we have lots of features for mobile already. Then it, it goes into progressive web apps or PWAs. And then here is the Zaps tool that will help you in five minutes make a Zap. So we're going to do that. And here it talks about the tool and what is expected. It's going to ask some information about your app, your Zim app page and an icon image and then you'll receive a zap.html which you can turn into your index page a manifest json a service worker icons a library with uh, local files so the idea is you want local files here so that it can work offline that's the idea behind a PWA. However, our PWAs also are reading in data from the server, so that kind of negates the offline side of it, but still the PWA is handy because it can be stored on your phone as an icon and open up in a full screen rather than in a browser window, which is nice. And then a readme with instructions. So here's the tool right here, and our company can be Zim, and the name of it is Odd robots plural we'll keep it in portrait that's another thing that this will do it will lock portrait landscape for you or any which is both and we're going to choose an index file before we do that we're going to peek at our index file just to talk about it a little bit and we're going to also choose a path for the images and a list of the images which is usually an easy thing in zim to get because we preload them as a list so this is the same format and then there's the icon file and we hit get zip and this is the sort of the five minute process that we're talking about to make a zap okay so let's go to the index page now so here we are in the robots directory and we're looking at the index page our index page currently has links to create js zim and pizzazz that are all stored on the CDN, the zimcdn and, and .org. So we want those to be local. You can do it manually, or if you just leave it like that, the Zap tool will make these files local for you. It'll go grab those files and bring them local and point them in all that direction. So we're gonna see that happen. If you have any other scripts, you might want to just point to them in the same direction, like make a scripts directory and, and just point to them locally with relative URLs. Here we have the frame. We're bringing in the logo to start from assets. This one's a little bit different in that we just started quickly with the logo and then we're bringing in an audio sprite later and we're bringing in that audio sprite plus more backings, or sorry, more uh, images and 
other assets, fonts, and things like that. Okay, so we're going to have to compile that list off, and we just bring all the assets in right there. Um, but this one, we have a staged loading thing, which is fine. What Zim will do is it will add a PWA script, a, just a little function that will prompt a PWA on Android and Apple. And that it doesn't happen automatically. It's a thing called add to home screen. So it's a, a, a function of your phone called add to home screen. And it's just saying, please add this app as a home to your home screen as an app. And so it's a little pop-up message that if you're on mobile and it's not being loaded from your home screen, then it will pop up this message. Then it's up to you or up to the end user to actually add that to the home screen, at which point it acts like an app. And it won't pop up that message if you run it from your home screen. So that's the idea. There's a couple things. We are keying the PWA script based on the, the ready function here and also based on the end where it says end ready right there. And then based on those, it will kind of insert or wrap the PWA function in there automatically for you. If it can't find those, it just puts a PWA in there and your app will load normally. But what happens then is you see the app and then over top of it is the message. If we do it, if we recognize those two things and insert it with um, an init, then what happens is you see only the message. And once you clear the message, then you see the app. So it's not that much of a difference, but I think I prefer having only the message show up at the start rather than the app starting. OK, that's that's the only difference there. So no big deal. All right, let's um, let's choose this index file then. And it's here in the robots directory. So I'm going to come back here and choose an index file. I'm going to look. I just did finger, which is Dazzle Finger, another app, and just finish that. So now I'm looking for robots, which I think is also up here somewhere. Robots, 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 robots. And there it is. And there's the index file right there. Boop. Note that in there, there's an assets and some raw images and stuff like that, that Photoshop images. So we already had the assets folder and an index. And I'm choosing the index file. OK. And then the path is called assets slash slash. And then we want a list of picks like that. So let's compile that list of picks and or assets. First one is logo. Uh, logo. And so I'm pasting that into here. Logo, comma. Now, like I said, usually these are all in that format, such as here. Here we are loading assets. Uh, Zim audio sprite data. Hmm. I think this will work, although it's not a string, it's a reference. Yeah, so that could have some problems. Uh, I'm not sure what to do now. Let's see. So it, it's using this string of assets right here to grab the assets. So we'll grab that stuff, put it in. You may have to adjust it afterwards. So there's that string of assets. It's using this string of assets to figure out what files to um, cache and stuff in the manifest. So, or in the web worker, whichever one, I can't remember. So we'll want robots.mp3 probably in there. Copy that. It doesn't actually do anything to this code. It's just using these values to grab the files. So we would want robots.mp3 to be there. And we'll put that right in there. Boop. Robots to MP3. Just make sure we have the commas. Okay. Like I said, normally that's just one line that we copy and paste in there. This one with the loading was a little bit different. And we're going to choose an image file. I believe in the assets we have a square thing. So this is 256 by 256. Oh, no. 512 by 512. 512 by 512. So we've chosen the icon and then we hit get zip. And there it is. We've made 22 of these zaps, and this one will open in show and folder. And I'm going to just unzip it. So right click and uh, extract all. Uh, extract. 
So here is what it's given us then. Zap22 has a zap folder. So the idea here is it's now, we've got extra stuff now. We've got an icons folder that has all the icons made for us. Isn't that nice? In different sizes. We have uh, the libraries, which is brought in. As you can see, it's brought in all of those files we had there. Oh, uh, crap. We left it at zim docs. That should be, uh, let's do that over again. Okay, so I'm just gonna do our five minute thing over again. Um, have to load up a new index. So here's the index page. We were testing with the docs, so that should be a min. Oh, that was causing everybody to download three megabytes every time they ran that. <laughs> Oopsies. Okay, so there's the min and we'll upload. Upload that and let's run this again. Choose an index file, robots index and get the zip. There's number 23 now. And then over here, we're going to where you can't see just yet. I'm just uh, extracting all from that zip, extract. And here's what it gives us. So now in the libraries, it's brought in zim min right here, which is just under a meg. Uh, when it's on the CDN, it's only like 300K or something like that because it's gzipped. But here, when you're doing it locally, what's gonna happen is this is gonna load locally to your phone and therefore it's really fast. There's no loading anymore. That's another good thing about PWAs is everything is on the phone already. All those images are gonna be on the phone. This will be on the phone. It's all be cached on the phone. The only thing it needs to do is go out and get the data file. So that means the loading of it is, is fast, just like a native app. Okay, so that looks good and uh, oh yeah, we're exploring this stuff. So if we go back to the zaps folder, here's the zap.html. Now this is a little bit confusing. For a PWA to work, you need to have an index page. But oh, the idea behind this is we can just copy all this stuff. We're gonna continue to look at it before we do it. We're gonna copy all of it and just drop it right in the robots directory. We did not want to call this index.html and automatically try and overwrite whatever you had. We want you to be able to look at this file and make sure that it's good and then copy it over into the index. Okay, so that was just a safety thing and it talks about that in the readme. But you're going to want to put, we're going to look at this, we're going to want to put all of this stuff into your index page eventually. Let's just take a quick peek at the manifest though. So here's the manifest. The manifest um, specifies the icons, it tells us that we want to start in portrait mode and it figures out some stuff that helps it show up as uh, a mobile app rather than a web page. Okay, so that's the manifest, JSON. Here is the service worker. The service worker is what caches all of the stuff for us. So there's all of the stuff that we want to cache under this name, and it prepares us for the service workers, okay? So you don't need to worry about anything. If you follow any PWA videos, etc., it tells you, oh, you got to do make a service worker, you got to make a manifest. That's what the tool does. It makes all of that for you based on how hours and hours of researching this and putting it all together. <laughs> okay, so that's the manifest and the JSON. Now let's take a look at the zap. Here is the zap file itself. It should look just like your index page, except we've added some things here in our steps. So there's a link to the manifest. Step two is some meta stuff to prepare for the PWA. Here is a step three, which is a service worker. So that brings in the service worker. Underneath here, we have the PWA. And here is our function run zap. You can change the name of that if you want and take a look at that. It's wrapped what we had before in this function called run zap. And it did that because it recognized uh, here's the end of run zap. It's inserted that in between our end of ready that we had before and the end of start that we had before. So it's basically wrapped all of what we had inside of the ready, but it's wrapped everything inside in this run zap. 
Uh, if it doesn't do that for you, you're welcome to manually do that. All right, if you called the ready event something different or used a uh, use the um, the ready event like stored frame in a variable and said that variable dot on ready call this function, then it might not uh, it might just do this for you. Do that like that, and then you would want to wrap all of that stuff if you so desire. Anyway, there it is wrapped, and that's pretty well it. So that's the only changes. All this stuff will be the same. You won't even notice it when you run it as a web page, like on a website, you won't notice it. Only on mobile, only if you're not loading it from your, your home screen as an app, will it pop up a little message saying, um, please add this to your home homepage, okay? which has become a sort of a standard way of activating PWAs, progressive web apps. Yay! All right, so your final step then is, well, we haven't copied over yet this stuff. So there's our robots directory. What I want to do is go here, grab all of these things right here, and drag them into the robots directory. Bloop. That adds the icons. There they are. It adds the libraries. There they are. It added the manifest, the service worker, and here's the zap file. So if we're happy with the zap file, what we should do is test this zap file out. Uh, I might need, I'll open it up in a browser here. And there it is. It should be on the server to get the data. But anyway, here, here we are. And nope, nope, yeah. okay. Yeah. So evil robots is working. Okay, the zap file is, uh, can we get this stuff? Yeah, um, mute, that works, yeah. Don't mute it. All right, so the zap file seems to be working just as the index did. So we're now probably what I would do if I were you is I would take the index and uh, duplicate it or rename it. And, uh, duplicate is probably easier. Underscore pre uh, tool. There we go. So I have an index copy of my original index. And then what I'm going to do is open up my zap here, copy everything, and just paste it into my index. Paste it. So now my index file has all of that zap code in. Okay, and we upload the index, upload the index. We upload the libraries, upload. We upload the icons, upload. We upload the manifest, upload. Probably could have done this with multiple select. And we upload the service worker. We don't need to upload the zap. We don't need to upload the readme. Um, so we did the service worker. We did the manifest. Now let's go check it on the site then. So we'll go back here and it's in the zap store in Zim. Uh, it should be this one right here, robots. And there it is working. Okay, so if we go control U, we take a look and we see it's indeed loading the stuff from the libraries right here. It's got all the PWA stuff in it. And note that it ran just like normal. Bloop, like so. Just mute that. Ran like normal. Uh, if it were on mobile, uh, which I'm not gonna show you, but you can try this on mobile yourself. Just go there. And if you're on mobile, it will now pop up a message saying, please add to home screen. At that point, you can run it from, you know, once you add it to the home screen, you can run it from your home screen and you won't be in the browser window anymore on your mobile device. Ooh. So I am Dr. Abstract. Uh, this has been a Zim Explore. Uh, glad to go through this process again. I think we've already done an explore on this process, but may as well do it again with the sort of latest apps that we're putting into the Zap Store. All the best, have a great day or night. If you have any questions about this, you're welcome to come in to zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd be happy to help you out. Cheers. <laughs>